So I've got something pretty interesting to show you. The other day, a package arrived in the post and it was something that I was very excited about. If you know photography and you know vintage lenses, then you know the Helios 44-2 and if you watched the Batman, then you probably might know the fact that it was used in that as well for the uh, car chase scene. And basically, it's just a really iconic lens that has really interesting bokeh. After doing some research, I found that only a handful of videos actually used the Helios and the GFX together. And I was really interested to see how the GFX would like make use of the Helios. I was mostly interested in how the bokeh would look since it's a larger sensor and that means the aperture would be even shallower than it is usually on full frame or 35 millimeter. While the sensor isn't loads bigger, it still definitely does make a difference. So this lens arrived in the post and I immediately put it on my camera using my M42 to GFX uh, adapter. I got it when I got the GFX, but I actually didn't even have a Helios lens yet. I was just hoping I could find one for quite cheap and I managed to. I didn't really fancy paying what some people pay for a Helios lens, so I got mine for a lot cheaper. I had half the price that I've seen them for online, which is very nice, but the adapter was quite expensive. It's a, uh, it's a KNF concept adapter. I think it was like 60 pounds, which, you know, isn't ideal, but it means I can use any M42 mount lens on my GFX, which is very nice. So I put the lens on the camera and I started taking photos. Nothing really interesting at first. I was just taking photos of my cats and just some things around like my garden and my house and a few portraits of some family members. And uh, I was just seeing how the bokeh looks since I actually hadn't seen a good video that shows the bokeh on the GFX. Like, I've seen it on a few other videos, just like, you know, full frame cameras, but I hadn't seen anything on the GFX. And the only GFX videos that I've seen using the Helios lens are like really not great for what the Helios is known for. Like they were, they were all right videos, but it was just, they were showing the sharpness and not the characteristics of the lens. It was just like, oh, this is how sharp this lens is. Oh, this is the lens stopped down to F9. This and that, it's just like, you know, I, I want to see it wide open. I want to see the like really swirly bokeh. So I got a few photos and they're not amazing, but it definitely does show the bokeh. And I knew there was potential using this lens on this sensor. I also noticed that the lens actually covered a surprising amount of the sensor. I've used a few different vintage lenses that have been adapted onto my GFX and honestly I think this is the best one for it. It covers pretty much all of the sensor apart from a tiny bit in the corners or, or if you've underexposed the image you may be able to notice a bit of vignetting then but for the most part it's pretty perfect. A day or two later, I went out and shot some portraits with my old college teacher, Simon Colgan. I'd done a video about him before, which will be linked up there, I think. And uh, basically, he, he shoots a lot of large format photography using wet plate collodion. He just invited me out to take some large format portraits using some different types of film. And I brought my GFX with my Miticon and also the Helios lens. I really wanted to test it out on some nice portraits, so I got some portraits of Simon. And I also got some photos of his cat. I'm not going to lie, these were really underwhelming. I much prefer the Miticon images because the Helios images, as you can see, the bokeh isn't really that dramatic. But, you know, it's still extremely sharp. The lens is very sharp and it'll be really good to get some nice sharp images. So I was a little bit disappointed with that one, but I didn't really kick myself too much because I knew it wasn't the right environment to be shooting this lens. I know that you're meant to be shooting it with like sort of backlighting-ish, kind of. Not really backlighting, but like small lights in the background. So like lights going through trees, leaves is really good and fairy lights and stuff like that is all perfect for this lens. But I was in an open field with very flat lighting and it just wasn't great. So that is when I asked my friend Sam if he's free for a shoot. He's been on the channel before. I took some portraits of him and he's also made music for the channel. He's just a really cool guy. Uh, I reckon you should go check him out on whatever social medias. I know he started streaming and uh, he posted a clip on his Instagram story and it was really funny. So honestly, it's worth checking out. So I met up with Sam and we went to Tahiti Woods. It's a pretty good spot for this lens since there is a lot of like uh, tree cover, but there's still light coming through the tree leaves and it was just perfect. I got quite a few images. I also brought the Miticon as well for some images. And as much as I do love the Helios images, I think I do prefer the Miticon images purely because uh, 
the lighting in the Metagon images was a lot better. I was trying to get as many swells in the background as possible with the Helios images, which meant that the lighting wasn't the best since most of it was behind Sam, but there are a few images there where the lighting does look alright. Just so you can see how well this lens actually adapts to the GFX, I do have some unedited images here for you. These aren't the raw files as those would be too big to actually put on Premiere Pro, but these are just JPEGs that I haven't done anything to. Some of them are underexposed, but you know, it's just to show you how well this lens has adapted to this sensor. Personally, I think the lens adapts really well. Like honestly, it's so good with the GFX. And I'm really surprised with how much it actually covers off the sensor. There is very little vignetting and although, and although it does become quite soft on the corners, the centre is extremely sharp. It's a lot sharper than the Mitocon, even when the Mitocon is stopped down a bit. So yeah, if you're wondering, on the GFX sensor, this lens that is an f2 is I think the equivalent of an f1.5, so it is very shallow, maybe even an f4, I'm not entirely sure, I think it's f1.5. The lens can also focus extremely close, up to 0.5 meters. This means you can get some really nice close headshots and although this isn't the best picture, it does show how close you can focus and I did miss focus and I could even I could even go closer because I missed focus on his mouth but uh, yeah it's, it's so close, I felt like I was just really like in his face which I pretty much was. So overall I recommend this lens to anyone that has a GFX, I recommend getting the adapter and the lens and giving it a go for yourself since it is really fun to use and you can get some quite quirky images. I would definitely be using this lens a lot in future and I think it has now become a permanent like bit of kit for my GFX setup. Usually I was just taking around the Mitocon with me and that is it but now over these past few days has been the Mitocon and the Helios since they do create very unique images like both of them. The Mitocon is a bit more professional and a bit more to what I like to post on Instagram and what I like to have as my aesthetic if you will but the Helios is just so fun to use and you can get some really unique images out of it and uh, yeah just nothing beats that bokeh. But anyway that is going to be the end of this video, I know it was a bit of a short one but there wasn't exactly loads to say since I haven't used it much, I've only shot of it three times but those three times have been really good and I wanted to share the results. I hope to see you in the next video, goodbye.